If you're gonna to go to the effort to build a home or a garage gym, you're gonna put in the time, you're gonna spend the money, you're gonna make the space, you're gonna clear part of your schedule so that you can use it every day, you might as well get results, right? And in a surprising number of people, they put in all that time and effort and they just don't get the results they want. Well, if that's ever been you or that's you now, this is the podcast for you. That's what we're gonna talk about today on the Gym Crafter Podcast. Welcome back to the Gym Crafter Podcast, everybody. My name is Tim. I am the head gym nerd here at gymcrafter.com, the website that I built to help ordinary folks like you and I build great home and garage gyms that we absolutely love. And part of absolutely loving our gym is actually seeing results from using it. And a surprising number of people that I deal with, I also train people in this gym, a surprising number of people, just they put in the work and they think they're doing everything right, but one or two just even can be small mistakes hold them back from getting the results that they want. So that's what we're gonna talk about today on the podcast. I'm gonna talk about five things that I see people not doing or doing that are keeping them from getting the results that they want. And you know, if you guys are gonna go, like I said, to the trouble of building a great garage gym, I want you guys to be able to get the most out of it. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be better dads, brothers, sons, wives, daughters, sisters, all that kind of stuff, because that's why we work out, right? We work out to be better at life. And if we're not getting any better at life, we get discouraged and we stop using our garage gyms. And that's no bueno, right? Before we get into the episode, if you like this type of thing, like the video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, all that kind of fun stuff. Leave a comment. And uh, that's probably the last time you're gonna hear me ask you to do that because I realized as I was watching YouTube last night, I don't think that I have ever rung the bell so hit subscribe, hit the like button, or left a comment because the person or a graphic on the screen asked me to. And it's really just kind of an annoying YouTuber thing. I don't like saying it. You guys don't like hearing it. Here's what I figure. If I make content that's good, you'll hit the like button. If you like all of the content, you'll subscribe. I don't like notifications. So ring the bell, don't ring the bell, whatever you want to do. And I'm always going to ask you to give your feedback, but leave a comment if you got a comment. Outside of that, I think I'm done saying that. Before we get into the actual episode, what I wanna do is give you guys an update like I normally do. Let me give you a quick training update. As you guys know, I am currently training to lose weight and maintain muscle mass. Uh, in January is what the calendar is breaking down. I am gonna make a run, probably either a 24 or a 36 week run at adding as much muscle as I can, but I need to get down to a certain body fat percentage first. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I just wanna share with you guys over the last week, I did have an issue. I had my first stumble, now this happens Every time I lose weight, it happens to all of us. You're going well, man. I've been trucking along for, for probably three months now. I'm losing exactly the amount of weight that I wanted to lose. And I had a slip up for just a few days. I was driving around on a Friday. I was doing some errands and I was hungry in the morning. And I was driving past McDonald's and I'm like, you know, I haven't had a sausage McMuffin in quite a while. <laughs> and uh, evil McDonald's. Uh, if you buy one sausage McMuffin, at least in my area, you get another one for a dollar. So for like five bucks, you get two sausage McMuffins and a Diet Coke, nice healthy breakfast for me. And uh, I was like, man, this is awesome. Logged my food in the parking lot and I went, well, that's 850 calories. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know about you guys. I'm not a big fan of what you do with carbs. I, I think it's a lot of hyped, overhyped stuff as far as high carb, low carb, all that stuff. But what I can tell you is that for me, if I start my day with carbs, I do tend to get hungry later in the day. And as I was running errands, I'm like, well, you know, I haven't had Jimmy John's in a long while either. And, and of course I'd like a cookie. Well, there's another 1100 calories or something. So what I'd realized is that by the time I was done with breakfast, lunch, protein shake, I had blown through all my calories for the day. So instead of being a sensible person on a diet, I went, well, since I'm already over my calories, I might as well enjoy dinner. Kentucky Fried Chicken, here I come. So I definitely ate four pieces of fried chicken, mashed potatoes, corn, it was delicious. And uh, you know, since it was Friday, I'm like, well, you know, I've been on this diet for a while and you know, it's Friday, why don't I just enjoy my Saturdays? I'll get, I'll get back to it on Sunday. So Saturday was a little bit of a mess and then Sunday was like, well, it's still the weekend. You know, Monday's a good day to start. The you guys have all had these conversations, right? So let me give you a couple of things that helped me get back on track because I did get back on track on Monday and what I realized was a few things that really helped me out because in the past, I would have just, I'm already off the rails, right? Might as well just continue to go off the rails completely and just deal with it later and find myself back at square one. So I didn't want to do that. So what I did was number one, I really like this carbon diet coach app. The cool thing is, is you check in every Sunday and it says, hey, were you compliant? And while there's no button for absolutely not, uh, I did say no. 
and it basically says, hey, no big deal. We're just gonna reset, try it again this week. Nobody's shaming me. Nobody's like, hey, just, just it's just like, you got a fresh, clean start. And, and I really like that about this app is it does things in weekly blocks. So it doesn't really let me get too far off the rails. The other thing that I did actually is a skill that I, I used to teach people. So I used to manage a very large group of salespeople who took incoming phone calls from the general public. And if you ever wanna just feel horrible and be bummed all day long, get a job taking incoming phone calls from the general public. It is a, it's a hoot, let me tell you. But uh, what I used to teach him is something that Marcus Aurelius uh, wrote in his book, um, Meditations is the book <laughs> that I'm thinking about. And uh, he used to say, and this isn't the exact quote, but basically he used to tell himself every morning, today, Marcus, you're gonna run into some idiots and they're gonna do idiot things and say idiot stuff so don't get mad when it happens. And I used to tell my salespeople that because what would happen is they would come in and they go, I hope I don't deal with any idiots today, right? And surprise, surprise, you know, I don't know if you guys have met the general public, but uh, odds of you not dealing with any idiots aren't that good. And so by telling yourself in the morning when that idiot calls, instead of going, dang it, I was hoping I wouldn't get you today, you would say, there you are. I knew you were gonna call. I was expecting your call. How can I help you, Mr. Idiot or Mrs. Idiot? And that really helped people a lot when they were dealing with these phone calls. Well, you can use a similar trick when you're in a calorie deficit. Today, I'm going to be hungry. It's gonna happen, right? Now there's tricks that you can use. You can eat, like I like to eat lots of cucumbers because they're low calorie, they fill me up, they put some, some volume and some mass in my stomach so I don't get as hungry. But sometimes, like when you're out running errands like I was, you just can't do that, right? So instead of me using this trick, I gave in, but usually what I'll do, and hopefully this will help you guys, is I'll say to myself in the morning, today, you're in a calorie deficit, Tim. At some point today, you're gonna be hungry. So that way, when the hunger comes, I go, oh, there you are, hunger, I knew you were coming. And it's just, when you expect it, and it's like, look, I'm supposed to be hungry. It's not something I'm trying to avoid, right? I am in a calorie deficit. Part of being in a calorie deficit is you're gonna have to deal with being a little bit hungry here and there. Uh, so if you just expect it, I found that for me that helps. So hopefully that helps some of you guys. And that is my training update for the week. Uh, the training itself is going really good. I'm very fortunate and blessed. Part of my job is to work out. So I start my day every day with a couple hours here in the gym, film some content, work out for a couple hours, six days a week I'm in here. So that part, like I said, I'm very fortunate. I don't have to really force myself to do that. I enjoy it. I love lifting. So not a big deal there. But uh, the not eating stuff, not always easy. So hopefully, like I said, that helps you guys out. But let's get into the episode today. And another part of my job in this gym is I do train people and I see a lot of clients. And typically as a trainer, what you'll see is there's a few situations when you'll see people seek out a trainer. And one of the more common ones is when you have tried or they have tried everything on their own and they're just not getting results. Maybe they got results at first, but they've hit a plateau or they're just not getting results or they're, they're working their butt off and they're doing everything they think is right. And they're like, you know what? It's time, it's just time to get somebody to help me. And that's where I end up seeing a lot of people. And as I look back across all of the people that I know that have sought out a trainer and have reached those situations, there's a handful of things that really they all have in common that, that I see them doing one or more of the things we're gonna talk about today. So I wanna to talk today about the five most common things that I see people doing or not doing that are keeping them from getting, maybe not just getting results at all, but not getting results that they want, not getting the best possible results, or sometimes not getting results at all. So, and that's never any fun. And stay tuned to the end. I've got a sixth bonus one, uh, cause you know, I'm a, shooting a podcast, so I've got to have a list of five things plus a bonus that keeps you till the end, right? Tricky podcaster tricks. But uh, I do have one at the end, and this one is important because if you don't do the sixth one, none of the other ones matter. It doesn't matter if you get a trainer, don't get a trainer, it doesn't matter how much you train, it doesn't matter what program you use. If you don't do the sixth one, you're just not gonna get uh, really good results, if any results at all. So stay tuned for that one at the end, but let's get into these five things. And the first mistake that I see a lot of people make is they overestimate what they can get done in 12 weeks and they underestimate what they can get done in two years or one to two years. And what I mean by that is unfortunately in this Instagram society that we live in, everybody's convinced that if they run a 12 week program, and it's a big really, it's a, a, a point of contention for myself being a trainer is I don't do 12 week programs. Now I personally work 12 week programs because I buy them from other people. But when I program for people, we don't do 12 week I'm not doing 12 weeks. I'm doing, this is what we're doing this week and this is what we're doing the next week and this is what we're doing the next week. Now in my mind, there's blocks in there. 
but as far as my clients go, there's not. And here's why. When you buy a 12-week program or when people buy a 12-week program, I think a lot of people, because of the marketing of that program, what they'll go is, oh, well, in 12 weeks, you know, P90X is a great example of this. In 12 short weeks, you could look like this. Well, guess what? In 12 short weeks, you are not going to look like that guy in the commercial. I pretty much guarantee it. And people get their hopes up that they can just, okay, I don't like working out. I'm going to, I can suck it up and do it for 12 weeks and I'll come into the gym and they work out for 12 weeks and you look in the mirror and they're like, well, that's not very much of a difference. And I think, like I said, they overestimate. So then they get discouraged and then they quit and then they backslide. And just like the diet thing I talked about at the beginning, what happens is they just lose all of the gains that they made and they're back at square one or worse. And it's just this daunting cycle. And what happens is if you look at your training in the terms of your life, and if that's too long, then look at it in terms of one or two years. If you were to train consistently, and I'm not saying you never miss a workout, I'm not saying that you never take a week or two vacation, I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying you need to be in the gym six days a week like I am. If you like it, that's great. If you're just to train really two to three days a week smartly, and you were to be consistent over the period of one to two years, and you just ate like a normal human being, right? Not, not like I eat when I'm not on a diet uh, where it's just constant fast food, but if you ate just normal, healthy food from the grocery store, you splurged on the weekends every once in a while, again, just live like a normal person. Most people are amazed at what two years of consistency can do for you as far as your health and fitness and how you feel and how you look. The problem is I think a lot of people look at that and go, well, I want the 12 week results, right? Because everybody on Instagram selling 12 week this and 12 week that, or maybe 16 weeks. So if I could give you guys any advice about, at all, if you're in this, in this situation, just look at this as a process. First of all, this is just the way that it is. You know, you wouldn't get up and not brush your teeth every day. You wouldn't get up and not take a shower every day. You shouldn't get up and not do something to make yourself more healthy every day. I think a lot of people think that they're gonna get, I'm gonna get healthy and then I'm there, right? And then I don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, that's not how our body works. So our body is an adaptation machine. It is going to adapt and it's only gonna keep the muscle that it thinks it needs. It's only gonna, gonna keep the energy levels that it thinks it needs. You're never going to get there, guys. So best bet is to build yourself an awesome garage gym. I happen to know a handsome bald man who can help you with that. But do that, get in the habit of training regularly and look at it over a long window and it's much easier mentally, and I promise the results that you can achieve in two years, I promise. You guys out there who have done this, put the comments down below and let people know for encouragement. Two years of consistent training can absolutely change everything about your health and fitness. And that leads us right into the second one, is I think people, they, they train wrong, and I'm gonna give you a specific example. We are not in high school anymore. We are not training with the high school wrestling team. We are not training with the high school football team. Bro splits for most people should not be part of your training. And what I mean by that is push, pull, legs, upper, lower, uh, upper, uh, where you're doing a body part or two. Oh, what's today, man? Today's chest and tries or back and buys, right? Or today's leg day. And while that used to work okay when you were young and your, your hormones were at a good level and you could pretty much do anything to your body and recover, what happens as you get older, uh, and I don't mean older like me, like dirt, I mean just in your 30s even. What happens as you have to deal with regular life is splits for the most part almost never work. Almost all of my clients are on full body workout programs two to three days a week, and I'll give you a few reasons as to why. Number one, if you're on a push-pull lower, so in other words, you're doing push exercises on Monday, you're doing pull exercises on Wednesday, and you're doing legs on, on Friday, right? Well, weekend comes along, boy, I wanna go out with the boys tonight. Uh, I'm gonna skip the gym tonight and just skip leg day because no, well, I mean, nobody ever skips leg day, right? But just in case, just on the off chance that that happens, when you go back on Monday, do you make up your leg day? No, you go right back to push. If you skip pull, do you hit legs and no, you probably go, well, I didn't get pull, right? Like somehow leg day happens once a month if that. And leg day is one of the most important leg days in a split because it's what jacks up a lot of your hormones and what causes a lot of muscle growth even through the rest of your body. They've done studies where people only work legs and their upper body grows because of it. So it's really important not to skip. If you skip a couple of days, where do you start? 
you know, where, where do you start back in the program? When you're doing full body training, if you miss a day, no big deal. It's full body Monday, full body Wednesday, full body Friday, right? And you're mixing up the extra. I'm not saying you do the same exercises on each of those days, but full body training is huge. When I shifted myself to full body training, when I used to own, when I used to work an actual 60 hour a week job, even though there was a great gym at where I worked, and I switched to full body three days a week instead of, instead of trying to fit in a split or, or even worse, trying to do a bodybuilding split where you're trying to be in the gym six days a week when your life, your kids, your, your job don't allow it, it's just, it's a losing proposition for most people. If you can go to even two days a week, I, I've seen some people get some amazing results Monday, Friday, Monday, Thursday, with just a full body exercise routine two days a week. But if you can do full body three days a week, I'm telling you, you set yourself up for a lot of success. Also, a lot of people when they do splits, what they're doing is they're overtraining because they're, well, it's back and buys, right? So I'm gonna do 15 different bice bicep. I'm gonna do preacher curls and concentration curls and spider curls and barbell curls and easy bar curls and, and oh, gotta hit those tries, right? So I'm gonna do skull crushers and over, Man, and you're just destroying yourself, right? And we're gonna talk about that in a second. But that doesn't allow you to recover right. It doesn't allow you to, to build in an appropriate manner. So when you do full body exercises, it actually forces you to work smarter and to just make smarter choices in your training. And it allows you to spread out your volume on those body parts instead of trying to cram it all in in one day. You're spreading it out across three different days and your body typically just responds better to that. So if you guys are doing splits and you haven't been getting the results that you want, take my advice and do full body training two to three days a week. Now, one of the programs that really just opened my eyes to this is by the guys over at Mind Pump. They've got a program called MAPS Anabolic. I'll put a link below. This is in my training toolbox. I return myself and my clients to this program quite a lot. I've run this program in full probably five or six times. It never fails to get back to doing to getting me results. It's full body training. There's a two, two day a week option. There's a three day a week option. There's these things called trigger sessions that you do on your off days so that it keeps your habit of working out every day if you like doing that. I can't recommend that enough. If you don't like that program, no big deal. Just switch to a full body training program two to three days a week. I promise you, you're gonna get great results, especially if you commit to it consistently for a couple of years. And that dovetails really nicely with point number three, which is the number one complaint that people give on the MAPS Anabolic program and probably the number one complaint I get from my clients, which is when are we gonna do the cool exercises, right? Uh, when are we gonna do the stuff I see on Instagram where I've got standing on a BOSU ball on one leg, curling in my left arm and jumping rope in my right arm with a, with a 45 pound halo strapped to my head with a bungee cord on the wall? Answer, we're never gonna do that stuff. Uh, go back and watch Pumping Iron. If you haven't watched it before, you gotta watch it. If you lift it all, you gotta watch this movie. But one of the things that I always just think to myself when I see these guys is you've got Arnold Schwarzenegger and a bunch of guys building some of the best physiques that have ever been built in a gym. And they're in there and a rusty power rack with a rusty barbell with rusty iron plates and some dumbbells, right? And a, and a bench. That's it guys, that's all they had. They didn't have cables and fancy exercises. They did the, the big five lifts they did bench press, they did rows, they did squats, they did deadlifts, they did overhead presses, and they put in some accessory work in there, and that was it. They didn't get fancy, they didn't overcomplicate things, and you know, as you guys know from watching this podcast, I've been reviewing a lot of these things that you see behind me, which are all-in-one trainers, and I'm changing this up really soon. There's gonna be just a regular old power rack in here real soon, and I can't wait. I see a lot of people, what they do, when they buy this stuff, they're like, ooh, I'm gonna have cables and I'm gonna have a Smith machine and I'm gonna have a, a power rack on the front and I'm gonna be able to do th all these 72 different exercises. And what happens is they just overcomplicate their training. And in reality, when you, you wanna talk about getting good results, if you were to every day, squat or deadlift, not always a good idea to do both on the same day, but if you were to do that, if you were to do some type of a push, like some type of bench press, some type of an overhead press, some type of a row, and you would maybe pepper in some, some accessory, I mean, you put do some curls here and there, or some tricep push, whatever. Just do that three days a week for two years, you're gonna build one heck of a physique, you are gonna get in shape, you're gonna build a lot of strength, and you don't need Smith machines and cables and BOSU balls and uh, all this fancy stuff. Now, 
Does that mean that it's not fun to have that stuff? Of course not, it is. But sometimes if you're not getting the results that you want, getting back to basics and just doing plain old push, pull, squat, lunge, hinge, carry. That's your six foundational movement patterns. Train those several times a week. If you've been throwing everything but the kitchen sink at your training wall, going, well, my arms aren't growing, let me try these other 14 different curl variations. Well, my back's not growing, let me try and buy a special, I need a chest supported uh, row machine. Just get back to basics and I promise you, I've seen so many people get great results going back to just plain Jane, basic training, and again, back to that MAPS anabolic program. It's a great way to do that if you're not sure how to do that. The next one I am going to blame CrossFit for, and that is there are no sweat angels allowed in my gym. Nothing annoys me more than when I see people post pictures of their sweaty body prints on the floor of their gym. Look, if you are collapsing in a pile of sweat after every workout, you are doing it wrong. If you've got a puke bucket in the corner of your gym, you are doing it wrong. You should feel better at the end of a training session than you do at the beginning. You should not be dog tired, unable to move, unable to lift your arms. The next day, you should be able to sit down on and get up from the toilet without screaming in pain. And for all of you guys who have overdone leg day, you know what I'm talking about. But look, there's no reason to kill yourself in the gym. What you wanna do, and this is from the Mind Pump guys as well, they say this a lot, it's not from them, it's not new with them, but you wanna do the least amount of work to stimulate the most amount of response and get out of the gym. You don't wanna necessarily kill yourself. And I see people do that all the time. I see people come to me and they go, man, you know, I was working out three days a week and it was working great, so I went to four and man, that was a little, and then I went to five and six and I'm just, man, no matter what I do now, I'm not, but to two hours a day, six days a week, I'm not making any gains, I'm not, you know, I'm not increasing my weights at all, I'm not getting any stronger, in fact, and I feel like garbage and I'm sleeping bad. And you get these people back to two days a week or three days a week or we scale down their workouts to much smarter, kind of just a lower number of movements in total. I can't impress upon you how important it is to not try and kill yourself. You should not be making sweat angels in your gym when you're done training. If you are, you're doing it wrong. Now, is it okay to push yourself doing cardio? Look, I'll do HIIT training, and yes, I end up in a sweaty pool, like just a mess, right? I'll go up on the rower and do Tabatas on the rower. If you've never done Tabatas, look it up. It's, uh, it's 20 seconds on, or 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off for like 10 minutes. Just 10 seconds as hard as you can, 20 second rest, and just repeat and whoo, boy. So you can make some sweat angels that way. But as far as your normal training goes, especially your lifting, as far as the resistance training portion of your training goes, you should not be killing yourself. You should not be super fatigued. You should not be um, as tired and worn out as a lot of people that I see. The rule of thumb is, you need to feel better when you leave the gym than when you came into the gym. And if you don't, you're probably pushing yourself too hard. This next one, I did a short on on YouTube and got a ton of really good feedback. And this is something that's funny because as a trainer, I remind the same people about this particular thing every time I train them, every time I see them, on every exercise that they do. <laughs> Which is if you're gonna do a rep, you might as well get the most you can out of that rep. Now, I've seen some people go overboard with this. Here's what I mean. If you're gonna do a rep, and we'll just talk about a bench press, okay? So what I see a lot of people doing, and especially guys who lift a lot of weight, is they'll unrack the weight and they'll bam, 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 right? Like, oh, I just knocked out 225 for 15, right? And it's like, okay, that's great. Now I want you to take the same amount of weight and I want you to unrack it and I want you to do a four second eccentric. One, two, three, four, see how long that is? Four seconds is a long time. Now I want you to hold it for a full second and then I want you to push up as hard as you can. And I want you to do every rep that way. And oh, by the way, at the top, I want you to tense every single muscle in your body as hard as you can, especially the muscles you're working. I want you to feel your chest contracting. I want you to feel your triceps contracting. And I want you to do that for a full second at the top of the lift. Then I want you to do another four, and tell me if you can knock out 15 reps with that same 225, I guarantee you, you probably can't. And that's what I mean by getting the most out of the rep. Now, do you need to count? No. What I tell people is to just lower the weight under control. And a good cue is instead of, let, instead of lowering it, think about pulling the weight towards you like on a, on a bench press. It, it sounds weird because the weight's already pushing down, but trust me, try this next time you bench. Pull the weight towards you and just control it down, pause, and then explode back up. 
and then pull it down and just do nice and slow and controlled. I'm not kidding. I've got people who I have to tell, like if we do three sets of 15, and by the way, you do three sets of 15, like this type of tempo, you're going to have to take some weight off the bar and swallow your ego a little bit because that's a lot of work. But I have to tell these people every set, every single set, slow down, slow down, slow down, <laughs> more control, squeeze at the top. Don't, don't just bounce back down and up. Stop. And st so anyway, you guys get the idea. But if you're going to do a rep, think about it this way. You got to make every rep count. Every rep matters. If you're going to go to the effort to do it, I'm not asking you to do any additional exercises, not asking you to do any additional sets. In a lot of cases, I'm asking you to make the bar lighter. But if you're going to do a rep, do whatever you can to get the most possible out of that rep. And I promise just that one thing, even if you don't do anything else that we talked about today, if you just concentrate on doing that one thing, and I'm going to guess that, oh, 95% of you aren't doing this. And the reason that I say that is the next time you walk into a commercial gym, I want you to look around and you tell me how many people are doing reps that way. I almost never see it. Literally 95% of the people in that gym are banging out their reps because they just want to just want to knock these reps out, right? get back to their Instagram account between sets. So it's real important that if you do this, you're, I promise it's gonna make a huge deal and you're gonna see just how much, how much more quickly you make gains by controlling the tempo of your reps. And now onto that bonus six tip that I talked about earlier. The one thing that if you don't do this, you can flush everything else down the toilet. I get a lot of questions of what supplements do I take? What kind of training program should, they should I do? Um, you know, should I do, uh, what angle should my spider curls be at? What's the best angle, like, like majoring in the minors, right? Like looking at all these things and even majoring in the majors. Are you training full body? Are you training two times a week? Are you training with the right consistency? Are you training uh, with the right intensity? Are you training the right tempo? You can do all of those things right. If you're dragging your butt into the gym on four hours of sleep every night, you're flushing all that down the toilet. I, I'm not kidding, especially, you might be able to, again, like I said earlier in the podcast, when I was young, yes, I could go out, I could party all night, I could go directly to work in the morning after being out all night, I could hit the gym after work, and I would be like, that's fine. If you're 23 and you are, are full of natural testosterone, um, or if you're a woman full of whatever the equivalent of your recovery hormone is, I don't know because I'm not one, um, <laughs> but uh, when you're young, you can get away with that. Once you get even into your late 20s, what you're going to notice is that lack of sleep affects everything and your body is not going to want to build muscle because it takes energy to build muscle. It's not going to want to, to build muscle if it needs to spend energy on other stuff like the fact that you only slept four hours. You need to be sleeping seven to eight hours a night on average consistently every night. And one of the things that kills a lot of people, and this was a big mistake I used to make, is okay, work nights, I would get eight hours of sleep because I gotta get up for work. I'm not 21 years old anymore, so I gotta get to bed at a reasonable hour, go to bed at 10 or 11, get up at six or seven, make it work on time, no problem. Get my eight hours of sleep, right? And then I would just throw that all out the window on Fridays and Saturdays because it's the weekend, right? Woo, gonna stay up late, don't have to get up early tomorrow morning. And that couple of days or those one or two days really screw up your sleep. So I'm not gonna make this a whole episode on sleep. I might do that down the road because I've had horrible problems in my life sleeping and I've done a lot, thrown a lot at the wall trying to fix it and I actually sleep really well now. But in the end, if you're not getting sleep, none of this other stuff matters. I tell clients all the time, if I would rather you skip your workout today and get two more hours of sleep than to come in and kill yourself on three or four hours of sleep. It just, it's a waste of time. And it's weird, I'm like, I'm not gonna charge you for this session. Like, just get some sleep. The best training you can do right now is under your covers. So I'm not saying to skip the gym every day, I'm just saying get some sleep. I can't impress upon you how important that is. People that I've known and that I've trained that have fixed that one thing have seen literally every marker of health in their life improve. Their blood pressure goes down, their cholesterol goes down, their stress levels and anxiety levels go down, their temper goes away, they build muscle in the gym, they build endurance, they're more happy with their kids. So I read a book a long time ago and I read it once a year. It's one of my favorite all-time books. It's called The One Thing. It's by Gary Keller uh, from Keller Williams Real Estate. The crux of the book is this. Find the one thing in each area of your life that if you do that, 
It makes everything else either easier or completely unnecessary. And sleep is that one thing for your entire life. Sleep is that one thing that if you do it right, it makes every other issue in your life either easier or unnecessary, right? It's got to be a priority. So, uh, and speaking of, I mentioned at the beginning that, you know, a job of a trainer is to remind people of things that they already know. I'm going to guess that you guys already knew that, but it's something that's like, yeah, we know that, but Netflix, right? By the way, I'm glad I said that. So Netflix was having a board meeting. It's really funny. Netflix was having a board meeting six months, 12 months ago. And they actually said, uh, they said, here's our number one competitor. Do you know what the board members of Netflix say is their number one competitor? Sleep. That's the number one competitor of Netflix. Not another channel. No, people falling asleep. So I know a lot of y'all are out there watching that one extra episode or five extra episodes of Netflix instead of going to sleep. Look, turn it off. It's going to be there. You're paying them however many dollars a month to watch it. It'll be there tomorrow. Just get yourself some sleep. Take care of yourself. Get into the gym. Get some results. Let me know what you guys think. What are the, what are the key things that you guys have done? Because I might do another episode like this. Like I said, I kept it to five just to keep it to a half hour episode. Plus, it sounds good on a podcast title. But uh, what are some things that you guys do? What are the keystone things that you guys see a lot of people making mistakes and doing that once you fixed or once you saw them fix really made a huge difference in their training? What's something that you've done in your gym or changed in your training in your garage gym that has made a huge difference in the results that you get? Because like I said, we all want results, right? And that is today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, One last time because I can't help myself. If you've watched all the way to now and you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button. And I promise that's the last time I'm going to do that. And uh, until the next podcast, I appreciate y'all. I'm Tim with Jim Crafter.